Hi, it's Nicole, and today I'm going to try to maximize my time by doing my February wrap-up uh, while also putting my groceries away because I feel like this is, at the moment, the only way that I can get uh, anything done. I need to just do several things at a time. The first book that I read in February was The Apartment in Babel Luc by Donya Mayer, uh, illustrated by Ganzir and Ahmed... Raddy, I think his name is. I'll put all of the information on the screen because while I'm doing this, I think I'm very unlikely to like have my s stuff together um, and be able to remember all the names of everyone. So that's how we're going to do this. I feel like that book is sort of um, similarly to the Zainab Fasiki book, Hashuma, that I read last month, well, that I read in January. It's sort of, um, that one was more of a graphic essay rather than a graphic novel or um, comic format even it was more just like text and then image text and then image rather than like their speech bubbles and um several panels on a on a page it wasn't so much that so if you're more interested in um graphic novel slash comic styling it's not really that it's more just like text and image uh, juxtaposed until you get to the very and uh, that's not a spoiler or anything, but at the end is more of a comic style. But I thought it was a really nice taster for Egypt, and it was a really great way to kind of kickstart my Egypt exploration for the month. Then after that, I read The Mummy Awakens by Mahfouz, by um, Nagib Mahfouz, and I really loved it. I feel like if you are someone who likes um, classic feeling adventure stories, um, kind of... Johnny Quest sort of thing, or um, I don't know, Lara Croft, what, what's that series, Tomb Raider type things, or Indiana Jones, I don't like Indiana Jones, but any of that kind of thing, and the reason I don't like Indiana Jones is not like any kind of political statement or anything like that, I just thought it was really, really boring, but um, if you're interested in that kind of adventure story type thing, and Egypt, and also crossed with a bit of a cozy mystery Agatha Christie sort of flavor, but authentic but more authentic because it's by an actual Egyptian person Oh, and you like um, class commentary then I feel like this is a really great one to pick up and it's super short the reason it's super short is actually because it is part of a um, short story collection and I didn't realize that until I'd actually picked it up got to the end and thought man I wish I had the rest of the stories in this collection I don't think they're connected but I really liked the flavor and would have liked to keep going with that and I kind of wish I did actually buy the full sh uh, short story collection because I from this went on to attempt the quarter by um, Nagib Mahfouz same author and I I mean it's not that I disliked it I found the introduction in particular really interesting talking about his work and where it fits in in Egyptian literature as a whole and how he contributed to making it more of a thing like this literary culture in the country and um, looking at the differences in his style like how his style changed how his like writing philosophy changed went from doing things that were like really um, physically descriptive so it puts you in the place like a lot of um, quarter novels um, or like stories about place where the descriptions are very like you can see being in the place as opposed to later on it sounds like his philosophy changed to be a bit more um an essence of the place you know and i found all of that really interesting all in the uh, introduction but then i found the actual stories to be um sort of really um just moralistic, very short, so fast to get through. I'm like 40% through the book, which is why I feel like there's no harm in continuing, you know? It's not like I'm gonna... I, I don't lose anything by continuing. I just didn't feel like I was gaining enough. Um, so, I don't know. But I think that if I do give that one up, I would definitely consider um, picking up more by him. Anyway, that's more than I need to go on about on that book. The one I read after that was Birthday by Cesar Aira and that one was different from his last book that I read that I really loved um, but it still had that flavor of absurdistness. It's kicked off I guess by um, him having his 50th birthday and all these thoughts come to mind and there's thoughts about his practice, thoughts about writing and creativity but all of that made me think as well about Albert Camus' uh, Create Dangerously which I think is just uh, Penguin taking snippets of things that he's um, 
said or whatever. It's not so much like a collection that he himself put together. But anyway, the point is they're both literary criticism. Both of them I found really interesting um, and valuable and stuff and uh, got me thinking about creative processes. And so, I mean, I'm always thinking about creative processes and that's something that just interests me generally. But that was something that um, I found a lot of value in, even though it was different from what I was kind of expecting from him. Although this is more... Um, this is more non-fiction, I guess, from him, although it's in that realm of creative non-fiction, which I'm realizing quite quickly is not necessarily my thing um, for lots of reasons about um, truth and not truth and subjectivity and objectivity and blah, 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 blah. I have so many thoughts about that, but I'm not going to get too far into that. It does come up a lot throughout this month of reading, but I'm not going to get too far into all of that, I don't think. Um, Anyway, the next book I read was How We Get Free, Black Feminism and the Combahee River Collective. This is edited by uh, Kianga Yamada Taylor, and it's talking to different um, women who were part of the Combahee River Collective, which kind of is a, is a collective that kicked off black feminism in the US, I guess. And the format is sort of a bunch of informal interviews, um, conversations really with these different women. Really interesting, I thought. Um, uh, I think, um, so I mentioned in one of my vlogs that for me it's quite important, I think, to use um, months like Black History Month, uh, February in the US, October in uh, the UK, and I'll probably be participating in both of those months when they um, arise, but I feel like it's important to use those to really look at the history side of Black History Month rather than using it simply as a Black Culture Month, which is also interesting, but for me anyway, should be happening throughout the year, like I said in that um, thing already. But yeah, so this was me looking at um, the history side of Black History Month, and I, and I really enjoy getting a look at these sort of lesser known or maybe just uh, ignored parts of history and looking at how uh, these reactions take place and where they fit into the overall narrative of our accepted a mainstream history story, whatever. That takes us to book number three, and that actually is from my digital TBR, but I actually didn't read the ebook that I had. I listened to that on audiobook. Woo! And then um, Woman at Point Zero. I have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of thoughts about this. I've actually started to feel a little bit exhausted from talking about this book um, for so long because I've had a lot of conversations over at Discord about this book. Um, I, because of all of my conflicting emotions about it, I actually ended up um, looking more and more into um, Nawal El Sadawi herself, who is, by the way, a very charming lady. I really love her. Um, I, I am so on board with her politics. I um, love her perspective on so many things. Uh, I don't necessarily love her perspective on um, what's real, what's not real, oh, it doesn't matter, it's all the same. I get the argument. I understand the argument. I find the whole metaphysical blah, 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 what's real, what's not real um, fascinating. However, there is just a line for me, I think, that it, it, it's frustrating, I guess, this idea of if, some, if a novel or a story, a book, whatever, is trading in the idea of um, this has a concrete basis in reality, um, it is trading on that, then I feel like you must want me to base this in my mind in a strong factual reality to be saying that in the first place because all good fiction is based in some sort of reality in some way anyway. So I feel like to put it forth as that, and I, I, again we discussed this in the Discord, it's not that the author herself is necessarily doing that, it's the publishing houses or translators, whoever, whatever, but I just find that really frustrating that uh, rather than like, oh, it doesn't matter to me, it really does matter to me, I don't know why, it just does, I feel like I can um, think more about why it bothers me and hash that out some more or whatever, but it does. Anyway, I didn't dislike this book, I thought it was... Um, interesting. I, f I feel like I got on with it a lot better once I accepted it as allegory, just allegory. It's not necessarily like a mini biography or anything like that. It's just a tale and it's written like that as well. It's like, I'm going to tell you a tale and then she tells me the thing and it's like, okay, cool, like, whatever. I had issues with the fact that in the translation, in the moving of this from an Egyptian context to a world context, 
especially to a Western context, it feels like it sort of accidentally reinforces some negative stereotypes about Arab men. However, I don't, I know that that's not the intention. I think it's just sort of an accidental residual of what happens when you move something from one context to another. However, I don't think, based on the interviews that I listened to from uh, now of Nawel El Sadawi. I gather that she is, the novel is placed in Egypt just because she knows Egypt and so she's writing um, in that place, but everything is meant to stand for a global story, like the women in this are, it's women in the world, just women generally. Um, the men in this, yes all men are terrible, like it's meant to mean all men, it's not meant to mean Egyptian men, you know that kind of thing. And. I mean, I joke when I say, like, all men are terrible because we all know that these, generaliz these generalizations are generalizations. And yes, different people are blah, blah, blah. If it doesn't apply to you, if you're a dude and you're offended, if it doesn't apply to you, then why are you offended? Etc. Etc. Anyway, I found all of that to be really stimulating um, brain material and stuff. So I value it for that, definitely. And I have a high appreciation of this book, um, particularly after having more and more conversations with people who really loved it. On an emotional level, it didn't do a lot for me, I'll be honest. It didn't really do a lot for me. It was just like, okay, cool, whatever. I feel like that's how a lot of people feel about, um, I don't know, allegorical stories generally. Like, either you like the kind of um, charming vibes of that sort of thing, or you don't. And in this instance, I mean, it was, it was fine, but I feel like it's probably ultimately pretty forgettable for me and didn't really make an emotional impact. And I feel like the reason it didn't is not any fault of the books or the writing or anything. I think it's largely because the book I was at a distance from the book in the first place because of um, thinking about the context of it, thinking about the outside story of it, thinking about, um, I don't know, like the, I guess, the, the true or not thing. Um, all of these outside factors were having a, an impact on me being able to truly connect emotionally with the, with the novel. Um, and then, I don't know, in the last 20%, I was like, okay, I'm on board now. And I feel like that's a little bit too late in a book. Um, to make a strong emotional connection. So there's that, you know, but ultimately I would say I liked the book I don't have a million potatoes. It's just like I'm, you know, putting <laughs> anyway, whatever um, I feel like ultimately it was a good novel that I appreciate but um, Probably not a favorite that I will ultimately remember that well, but I appreciate and will probably remember pretty well um, the discussion around it and stuff and I really appreciate that so yeah. The next book that I read was China in 10 Words, which I absolutely loved. I adored this book. Um, it's my kind of nonfiction, I guess. Um, it was part memoir, part personal history of China. Um, he, the author uses... Oh, I feel like I should probably say what Women at Point Zero was about. Basically, this woman has a crappy life. Everybody craps all over her, like, at every turn, from, from birth to death, whatever. But she takes back her life in her own way that is incomprehensible to so many people. There you go. But um, China in 10 Words is um, basically this guy is using 10 different words to really encompass the soul and spirit of China, I guess. <laughs> that sounds really like, I don't know, that, that sounds really sarky and stuff when I say it like that, but I really loved it and I feel like I could really benefit from there being more books that exist like this, more books that kind of take you through um, take you through someone's experience of a place using um, key points of uh, to pivot from I don't know it, it just it really worked for me I loved it um, it's not something I'm gonna forget in a hurry and that was for Invisible Cities next one I read was The Groundings with My Brothers by Walter Rodney this um, this one I really loved. Um, I feel like it again is one of those books that fits really well into my personal politics. Um, I loved the way that he sort of he was definitely centering um, black people and talking to black people as opposed to trying to appeal to a white audience. I I think. Um, I, that's a really important thing that doesn't that I think is often undervalued um, exactly what that means I also found it perfect that he was focusing not on like when he talks about um, when he talks about uh, black civilizations um, and the value and merit and stuff 
of black civilization. So he's not focusing on the monarchies that we always think about, ancient Egypt and the Ethiopian kingdoms and blah, blah, blah. Um, he's focusing on communities of people who like a value that doesn't often get appreciated. It's like, instead of looking at praising the um, hierarchy of a different group of people, it's kind of like that thing where you have um, minorities in positions of power, but they are still um, doing a lot of the things that um, imperialist forces do. And it's like, yeah, but that person's a minority, so it's all great now, everybody should be happy. But this is like looking at it like in completely a different way. It's not good enough to just center, you know, the um, privileged classes and stuff and like celebrate an aristocracy in a non-white context. It's like, let's look at the things that are actually of value, these community-oriented um, systems and stuff that should also be praised. I loved it. Anyway, that one, also I think I appreciated the fact that he is a Caribbean thinker. I want to read more from Caribbean thinkers. I'll definitely be picking up more works from him. It was interesting as well seeing what other people around him had to say about him and his life. I would highly recommend it. Then I finished listening to The Great Passage because I actually started listening to it in uh, January for Japan, um, for Invisible Cities, <laughs> and I was liking it. Uh, but for whatever reason, I think because I was falling behind in my Morocco focus, because I usually focus on at least one country um, per month for Invisible Cities, and I was falling behind in my Morocco reads, and so I think I just kind of pivoted to, towards them, and then I wanted to pick up at least one thing from Argentina. So, and since I'd already read something, I think, from Japan, this one sort of got um, moved out of the way. But um, I, I found it really charming. Um, if you like stories about friendship, um, about linguistics, it's basically a team building a dictionary and all of the stuff that comes along with that. It pairs well, I think, with Word by Word by Cory Stamper. And I um, just I just really adored it. It was, it was a nice, Feel good novel that that again I would recommend. Then we have um, Pay No Heed to the Rockets Palestine in the Present Tense by Marcello Di Cintio. This one I have a full review of um, so I'll just link that um, somewhere on the screen. I'm probably gonna check out a lot of the writers that he mentioned um, in this book. I would recommend that book if you're interested in um, finding out more about uh, the that, that cultural scene. <laughs> so I think that's it. This is a really long video, I realized, partly because like I've, I've basically tried to merge two tasks and I've slowed down both of them. So this, well maybe maybe I haven't slowed down the, the wrap up so much. I feel like I went through that pretty quickly. Well, relatively quickly. I've slowed down my putting my shopping away thing. But whatever, um, I think that that's all I have to say, or that's all I'm going to say about these books. Um, if you have any questions about any of them, want to know a little bit more about them, uh, feel free to let me know and, I, and I'll consider maybe uh, talking a little bit more about them or something. I really wanted to do a full proper review of Woman at Point Zero, but now I kind of feel um, <laughs> emotionally and intellectually exhausted from just having so many conversations about it in the Discord and elsewhere, just with people in my life and stuff like that. So. I don't know if I'll get around to it, but I'll try to. I also really wanted to try to do a wrap up of um, each of the countries that I did read for Invisible Cities. This In February, it was only um, two of the countries, I think. I only got around to Egypt and China. I didn't actually manage to squeeze in Colombia at the end, which I was trying to do really hard, but I didn't manage to. Anyway, um, I don't know if I'll get around to that. I hope I will, but who knows, because this past month has been uh, pretty wild and it doesn't show any signs of letting up in the next few months so I'll just have to see. Um, I kind of don't like falling behind on like replying to comments and stuff because that kind of interaction is my favorite part of being on booktube but that's just what's happened for now I guess. Anyway I hopefully will be able to get my stuff together and do more of what I want to do and do more videos and blah 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 talk about books yada yada. <laughs> anyway that's all for now and I'll see you again next time. Bye!